problems that blogging creates are, well, there, there are several. First, you have to be monitoring what's on the blog. Because you're not actively participating with them when they're commenting, there is a chance that somebody might say something offensive or inappropriate, and so you need a way to monitor that. There are ways to get around that. You can use keyword blocking on blogs. You can have the student self-report. I've had students come to me a couple of times and say, you know, this is something I, I don't think is appropriate. And only once did I have to confront a couple of students about some blatantly offensive and inappropriate things. They failed the unit. They were kicked off the blog. And so when students know that, that usually solves itself, but you have to be aware of it. The second problem technologically is that sometimes students don't always have home access. Now, we've gotten universal enough in Internet coverage penetration into the population that most people have access. And if you have a school that has a computer lab, there's really no excuse they can go before or after. And if you provide class time, it gives them enough incentive. But you do need to make sure that every student has access. And it's important to choose a platform that's stable enough to handle that many people. Recently, to be frank, Blogger has not done as well for me as I would like. So next year I'm switching over to a WordPress-based blog. But those are the two main concerns. Finally, a third possible concern is depending on how you grade, students write a whole lot more on a blog than they ever will do in class. I did the math and just this term, the average, including my regular 10th grade classes, was something like the equivalent of 15 typed, double-spaced pages of writing. That's a lot, and that's a lot more than they would have written in just a conventional essay or even in the discussions that they would have made in class. So you have to stay, to stay on top of grading. I use TAs that I train to count comments and to assign a score based on if it's substantive or not. And really, that's not hard. If it's just a yes, that's a great point, or I agree with you, those are, those are comments that I don't count. But I do encourage them to make them, but they have to make a certain number of substantive comments. So find a way that works for, for you to assess how much students are doing.